I want to take a quick look at practice questions set number nine and set number 10 here, starting with number nine, of course. Uh, question number one on this set says, uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation has a mathematical relationship similar to the one developed by who? So everybody just put down your stuff from the stuff you were working on here and focus on this. This would be Coulomb, yeah. So the answer is clearly Coulomb's there. Uh, which of the following graphs represents the relationship that Coulomb determined uh, between force and distance between two charged metal spheres? Force and distance would be which one? A, B, C, D. It would be D. How would I change that question to make C the correct answer? Uh, okay, yeah. If I plotted, not quite R squared, but if I plotted a graph of F versus 1 over R squared, it would give me a straight line. Yes, that could do it. That's not what I was thinking of, but that would absolutely work. How else could I change the question to make uh, C the correct answer? Not the relationship between F and R, but rather the relationship between F and Q, right? Then that would give me a correct answer there. The way the question is phrased, though, the answer is D. Next one, the magnitude of the electric force on an alpha particle that's this far away is whichever value, F is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared. We just multiply them together and we do our thing, right? And we end up getting... I want to say it was D, was it? D, 2.9 times 10 to the negative 9 newtons. Uh, and four, this is a good question, a little bit trickier actually. It says, Coulomb started with two identically charged spheres separated by distance R. He measures the force, then he changed the separation to two-thirds R. Uh, what does the force become? Well, we don't know what the value of the force is per se in newtons, but we do know um, how it relates to what it was. We're going to say my original force is what it was is k q1 q2 over r squared. Now my new force, after I make my changes to it, is k times q1 times q2 over 2 thirds r squared. Now I've got to square what's inside the brackets, which includes the 2 thirds, because the equation is k q1 q2 over distance squared. And my distance is not r with a 2 thirds out in front of it. My distance is 2 thirds r. I've got to square the whole distance, which includes the two-thirds. So that becomes k times q1 times q2 over four-ninths r squared. And if you remember from math class, to divide by four-ninths, you would multiply by nine-fourths. I like to think of it as multiply by the reciprocal, right? Although you guys learn it as... Is that what you learned? Okay, whatever. If you... If you divide by 4 over 9, it's the same thing as multiplying by 9 over 4, right? However you've, however you've learned it, it's the same thing. Now, my original force is kq1, q2 over r squared. So my new force is 9 over 4 times my original. So my answer is going to be d for that one. How many people get d? How many people got c? Forgot to square, right? Yeah. How many people get a? You got 4 over 9 right on the bottom, and then you just said, oh, okay, if it's 4 over 9 times the original, but it's 9 over 4, because you have to divide, multiply by that reciprocal. Okay, I want to take a look at practice questions set number 10 now. Uh, only a couple questions on this one, I think. Uh, first one's a little bit challenging, though. You got a force between x and y that's 6 newtons. The force on x caused by y, we'll call it Fyx, is 6 newtons. There's also a force of z on x. And we don't know what that is. Here's the way I did it. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do it, but here's the way I did it. I said Fyx is, I'm going to say kq1, q2 over r squared, and it's equal to 6. Now, I know what the value of r is already. Uh, I kind of know q, although not really, because what's 3 big q? I, I don't know. Is that coulombs? Maybe. Is it, is the number q, or is the uh, variable q 27? I, we don't know exactly. All we know is the charges are all the same. Uh, that's what I consider to be my original force. My new force, fzx, is k q1, q2, because the charges are the same, over, well, it's half the distance. It's 4, now it's 2, which becomes 
k q1 q2 over 1 quarter r squared, which is 4 times k q1 q2 over r squared. But we know what this is. It's 6. So that gives me 24 newtons. This is 6. This is 24. What's the combined force? 18. How many, how, many, how many of you guys did it using variable value changing like I did? One? All right. How many people got the right answer? 18. How did you guys do it? Anybody? Okay, okay, so you said uh, we know that F is equal to, we know that 6 is equal to K, which we know, times Q1 times Q2, but they're both the same, so it becomes Q squared, over 4, so we could solve for Q there, right? And then you could say, oh, okay, FZX is K times Q1 times Q2 over 2 squared. And get it that way. Yeah, absolutely, that works. I think it's a tiny bit more work than what I did, but just as good. Okay. Is that what you did, Brielle? No, I took the distances and then squared them, and then solved for the top. Like, and then 96 divided by 16, and 96 divided by 4. Let's take a look at question number two now. This one's straightforward, right? Here's a force. Remember, we're talking about forces now. Force to the right, we'll call this F12. We also have a force upwards. That's F32. And the net force is the red one there. We can calculate F12 easily. Um, KQ1, Q2 over 0.5 squared. Same with F32. And then we combine them by doing the Pythagorean theorem. We do that. I think we get C, wasn't it? 276? Is that right? And then we're going to say, of course, to find the angle, we're going to say theta right here is equal to the inverse tan function of opposite over adjacent, F32 over F12. I'm thinking that's like 70-something, wasn't it? 78.0. And that would be to three digits. Yeah, 78.0 degrees. Good.